so dramatic, right? Anyway, one more chance to bail if you're a liberal wussy and you're going to tell me that I'm going to hell because I killed a raccoon. Just take off. <clears throat> Don't watch my video. While I agree they're cute from a distance, they are also fierce predatory scavengers that will eat your face if given the chance. I made this video because my neighbor faced a gang of about 15 raccoons that had been fed every night for about two decades. The feeding stopped. The raiding began. My friend and neighbor was under siege nightly. They pulled everything she planted out of the ground. They went up on her roof. They pulled on her soffits. They defecated on a flat roof section that was right outside her bedroom window. They looked in the windows. They clawed at the windows. This is every night. She tried trapping them herself, but didn't have any luck. Gave up on it. Um, I told her I would try. Long story short, I got them all. Uh, one every night for over two weeks. Now, if you can afford exterminator, that's what you should do. If you can't, that's why I made this video. Before I move on, a brief rant for those of you who take in these little monsters when they're young and cute. Let me tell you something. Every type of animal is cute when it's young. Raccoons are wild animals. And I wasn't exaggerating when I said they will eat your face. Here's an article about a kid who was attacked by a pet raccoon. Yes, it attacked her face. You people who take these things into your homes, you should be ashamed. There are cute, adorable, domesticated dogs and cats within a few miles of your house who are waiting right now to be either adopted or euthanized. And instead... You take a wild animal into your house because you're cooler than the rest of us. An animal who will most likely attack you when it's older, at which time you'll let it go in the woods. Only it won't live in the woods. It'll come to the nearest garbage can or dumpster and harass yet another family. Hopefully someone in that family sees my video. Let's start with the law. This is only for the state of Ohio. If you're in a different state, your mileage may vary. You want to check that on your state's website. The Ohio Revised Code is where I found the regulation that deals with raccoons. They do deal with hunting and professional pest controllers also in the Ohio Revised Code. But that is where they deal with nuisance wildlife regulations as far as non-professional people trapping them. This will be found under... Ohio Revised Code 1501-31-15-03, parentheses 3, it shall be unlawful to fail to euthanize or release on site any nuisance raccoon, skunk, beaver, coyote, fox, or possum that is captured, trapped, or taken. That's it. There are regulations here for other animals. Read them if you want to. I'm dealing with raccoons here. The reason why their raccoons, skunks, beavers, and such are called out here is because they are carriers of rabies. And if you've trapped a nuisance animal, there's a high probability that that animal is infected with rabies because it's causing a nuisance and you've trapped it. So they do not want those animals moving around to become somebody else's problem or to be an, infect other animals in other areas. So you must euthanize them or re-release them on site, which why would you do that if you're trying to trap raccoons? So you must euthanize them, and that's a big issue with a lot of people, but you cannot transport them and re-release them. I see people releasing them in the park myself. I know there's probably dozens of them released in the park every week. Uh, that is illegal. So that's the Ohio Revised Code. It should also be noted here that raccoons are one of the few mammals that do not show obvious signs of rabies when they have it. They can, but a lot of times they don't, as in they do not foam at the mouth or act particularly crazy. They may just be somewhat aggressive, which is why we're trapping them in the first place. So please be aware of that, that they do not show signs of rabies and they could still be carriers. All right, let's talk about traps. There are a bunch of brands of cage style or humane traps you can get, and as usual, you get what you pay for. Have a Heart, Pet Trex, Humane Way, Best Choice Products. Those are just some of them that are out there. Mine is a GFA. It's from Tractor Supply. You get 
two traps for 25 bucks. It's a pretty good deal. The second trap is a smaller trap, which I have not deployed mine yet. I haven't had a use for it. The better traps run up to 150 bucks or so. There's not a whole lot of differences as far as the basic features, except for the more expensive traps do fold up for storage, which is nice. It might be an issue for you. From looking at the trap designs though, the more expensive traps do not appear to have the issues that I had with mine. So I'm working under the assumption that you don't have a lot of money to spend. Uh, so the GFA trap like this one or a similar trap is what you'll be working with. It will work fine as is out of the box unless you encounter an aggressive animal, which I did almost immediately. And this is the condition, this is what happens. This is the condition that I found the trap in. It was on its side like this, the top piece here, and the bottom piece here were bent apart. Now you can see how it flexes. It's quite a bit of flex. It's very hard to do. But these animals have a lot of time, and they're very, very strong. You can see what happens. There's an animal in the interior. He's pushing on this trap plate, the door plate. And the other end, well, I believe what happened, that, because there was a lot of, of scoring on the ground all around the trap. So I think there was another animal actually pulling. So this part was bent. You can see all the flex right there. This part was bent. This part was bent. And these actually bend in enough to provide enough clearance here eventually that the animal will be able to sneak through underneath this plate between the bottom of your trap and the plate because this bends and this bends so here's a solution for that you need to brace the top and the bottom what I did is acquire some offset angle it's aluminum 16th of an inch thick you can get that at any hardware store any major hardware store and it's gonna go right across here so you need to cut to this dimension you need two top and bottom once you get it cut to the dimension, I would angle cut the edges and sand the edges just to make it not so sharp because this edge as you transport the trap, it will come in contact with parts of your car and so you want to sand that. This is going to go in place right here and of course I've drilled holes in the ends. So I've centered, centered the holes in between the bars of the cage. So what you'll need here is fender washers, large fender washers. I use stainless steel. You do not need to use stainless steel, but I tend to overbuild everything. And I've got stainless steel screws along with nylon insert nuts, which you absolutely do not need. So you need a fender washer large enough that's going to cross, be able to cross the top of two of these bars. So it needs to be a pretty good size. I think these are inch and a quarter. But if it's too large, then it'll contact the edge bars and you won't be able to get it to go on. You also don't need to spray it green as I did. You can just leave it. At, I don't think it at camouflage matters in this application, but I had the paint on the shelf, so it matched the cage perfectly, so I went ahead and sprayed it. On the bottom, it's a different situation. The way the cage is made, you're going to have to cut the edge off these washers the two washers on the bottom so it'll clear this edge bar when you do this I would raise your your uh, door up out of the way now this is a piece that I made but a lot of a lot of the brands actually come with this this is a this is a hold open bar I just made this out of a coat hanger but works fine and it'll hold it open while you work on it because you do not want this to come down in your hand once you've got your trap held open Yeah, 
and bolt this right through. Braces on now. Bracing in place, we are ready to place the trap. When placing your trap, one thing you want to consider is prying eyes. I've had people who found out that I had eliminated some raccoons tell me to my face and in front of other people that they would never talk to me again and I was going to hell, etc. etc. You don't know what people are going to think. You want to put a trap where no one can ideally see the trap, see your activities there. Secondly, you want to put it where the action is. That's kind of obvious. Wherever you know that there's um, raccoon traffic, they're very mobile at night. So probably wherever you place it, if you put bait in it, they'll find it if you have a raccoon problem. If you place your trap just out in the open like this, they will clean your trap out. They will come to the side of the trap and reach in and eat it through the bars. So what you want to do is you want to place it in a way that keeps them from being able to reach in. Another thing that will happen if you place your trap like this is that they will shred whatever is beneath it. They will reach through and shred what's beneath it. You'll be pulling out a nasty mix of animal fur and dirt and parts of weeds and roots you'll be surprised the amount of damage they'll do to what's ever underneath it. So just for simplicity's sake, it's best to place a piece of slate or stone or wood, maybe anything underneath that they cannot shred. Here's what I recommend. Put down a piece of slate here to keep them from shredding the ground and pulling all that debris up into the trap. Also, it's best if you can place it next to a wall. If you don't have a wall, you can put blocks on each side and on the end of the trap any kind of stone barrier to keep them from accessing the sides of the trap, the rear of the trap will keep them from cleaning out your bait. That's it. I will not be baiting this because I it's going to have to sit out all day if I do that and I don't want to catch a cat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block it open and leave it in this condition. Inside the trap to place the bait on, I use a plastic lid just to keep the food from falling down through the, the bars on the trap. Ideally behind the trip plate is where you want the bait to be. That way they have to cross the trip plate to get to it. So if you have short arms you might want to... My friend uses a stick to push it back there and then she arms the trap, which is certainly a way to do it. I can actually reach back in there and do it. Initially I had a lot of success with salmon pate, wet cat food. Got a raccoon every night for two weeks on that as bait and then the trap went dry. Still had raccoon sign right in the area of the trap but they were not going in my trap switched to jelly bread immediately got a hit on that caught five or six more raccoons so between those two baits uh, that should work for you